G'day, I'm Phil. I'm Grace. And uh, we're here to talk to you about some beers. Excellent. Specifically, German lagers. Uh, so, what is a lager, Grace? I don't know. Can you tell me, please? Well. <laughs> <laughs> what makes a lager a lager compared to other beers? Like, what's the difference we're looking for? Right, so... It might surprise some of our viewers to know that a lager isn't just yellow and fizzy. Um, it is part of a very broad category of beers. Mm -hmm. um, and what sets a lager apart from other beers is actually its yeast, right. not its appearance. Uh, but that's a chat for another time. Um, today we are going to focus on these three German lagers that are available through the Glengarry website for all of you who are having trouble with the lockdown and no beer. Uh, so the first one that we have to show you today is the Dab, right? Dab, um, which uh, it is D-A-B on the label, but that actually stands for Dortmunder Aktien Brewerei. Mm. Mm. Um, it's very... Uh, I called that quite badly, sorry. Which stands for... Uh, no, that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> which stands for um, Dortmund... Joint Stock Brewery. It's a very informative and efficient way of describing a brewery. Thank you. Classically German. German, German folks. Uh, so these guys were founded in 1868. Originally, uh, it was called Herbers and Company Brewery, uh, named after the brewer. Mm -hmm. um, and he was the he was brewing with his three cohorts, whose names I forget, but we're just going to carry on. Uh, so, as a lager. That's a pretty classic lager hue, right? It's yellow, a blonde lager hue, a blonde lager. Um, it's more on the green side than on the red side. You can typically you can look at a lager by either its there you go, green there colour or its red colour. Um, but yep, this is a typical pale lager. Good head retention if you were to give it a wee swirl around. Uh, oh, good, clean glass. That's nice. <laughs> uh, so we'll um, give it a taste. So it's got a pretty good um, malt character behind it, mm -hmm. which is typical of a European lager. I noticed that on the first yep. sip as well. It's, it's kind of like a bit grunty and yeah. nice. bit fuller than... It is quite giving it giving it a, one, yeah. a bit more than... That's right. We um, it, it's, it's got a good bit in its balance. It's mm -hmm. not overly bitter. Um, a little bit sweeter, a touch sweet, sweeter than you'd expect in, say, a Pilsner. Um, fairly dry, not... Oh, sorry, it's... it's Touch sweeter, uh, light in body, um, and it's aroma. What are you picking up there? Biscuity. Which is also pretty like typical. Kind of baked goods. Yeah. I think that's tasty. I really like that one. Yeah, it's got good body behind it. Mm. Yeah. Alright. Alright, glass number one down. Next, we're moving on to the Berliner Pilsner. This one here. Uh, brewed by Berlin Kindle. I'll pass that to you so you can open it up. Berlin Kindle Schulteis Brewery in East Berlin. Uh, they first started doing that in 1902 um, and quickly became the leading beer brand of East Germany, specifically Eastern Berlin. Um, so they've done pretty well and they're still going. Still going. Uh, see, this one seems quite a bit lighter in the glass. Notice the beer on the side of the can. Mm. The beer fella on the side of the can. Incidentally, that's a symbol for Berlin. Oh, there we go. Here we go. It's uh, it's on the Berlin coat of arms. Let's pop that for Thanks our for viewers. That. All right, so so immediately you can also you can already see this is quite a bit more aromatic than the other mostly piney resiny notes coming from it, rather than that biscuity mm. that we got from the. Um, from the typical blonde lager, the Dortmunder Aktien beer. Mm -hmm. That is easy drinking. It's drier. It's more bitter. Decidedly more bitter. Yeah, it doesn't have as much of the yeah sort of sweet. Um, That's right. Yeah. That bolshiness that I was talking about. In the yeah, much dab, lighter. You know? Easier to knock back a few of those, which we don't condone. Oh. Oh, we've got to do the colour, sorry. 
See, this I is made a quick note. I was saying it was a bit, it was a bit lighter. It wasn't. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's. It just doesn't seem to have as much concentration you, of color as. Oh, well, see, look. If you compare the two, this well, one I mean, maybe almost they're... you could see is more red, whereas this one's more green. It's more of a greeny yellow than a reddy yellow. Yep, yeah. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. That's okay. That's all right. My eyes aren't working. Uh, yeah, well, anyway. So. Then we're moving on to the. Klaus Haller. The last one. Yes, Klaus Haller. So, this one is. It's, it's pretty interesting, actually. It's, um, I was looking forward to showcasing this one because it's. A different brewery they didn't start as a brewery to make this kind of beer and by this kind of beer I mean a non-alcoholic beer this one is completely non-alcoholic um, oh, I've got it in my hand I'm pouring you oh, sure. your beer right now oh, sure. um, teamwork teamwork so this beer as, as I said is a brewery that was created to make this non-alcoholic beer they started in 1972 um, which is pretty bold to produce a non-alcoholic beer in the midst of the 70s. My thought of thinking was that sort of the non-alcoholic beer range was like a really recent thing, that this was something that... Yeah, no, these guys have been doing it for a while. Um, and they have uh, gathered quite a bit of a cult following in the non-alcoholic uh, region. Uh, as a lot of you may know that um, non-alcoholic beers have become in vogue. Uh, as of recently, but yeah, we're gonna give this, this a try. So these That's guys are a bit of a point of difference as well because they're not removing the alcohol once the brewing process is done, right? Correct. Yes, they have brewed the beer specifically so that it does not, the yeast involved does not produce alcohol, which is, um, it's, it's actually a technique that they patented. Um, it's That's snazzy. It is, yeah. Um, so that that kind of puts them uh, a league ahead of some of the other non-alcoholic beers in the market who take the alcohol from the beer once it's, it's produced. And if you're doing that, you're stripping flavor. That's right, you're stripping flavor from the okay. beer. These guys seem to have managed to have nailed a non-alcoholic beer early on in the piece. Um, so we're really proud to have them at Glengarry's. This smells like wheat fix. <laughs> <laughs> it does! Yeah, it does a bit, yeah. It's got that um, real, it, it's got those I mean, biscuity notes the to it Stuff the special boss. Yeah. Very biscuity. Yeah. yeah. Really malty. But also piney. It's still got that really nice resinous hop uh, character to it behind it as well. Ooh. It's got kind of a still still really a lovely bit malty savouriness. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which I'm not used to saying about malt because usually it provides like a kind of sweeter a sweeter balance than yeah, it's yeah. um But no, this is really nice. It's I would definitely pick this over some non alcoholic. <laughs> We're not going to specify. We won't specify, of course not. Um, oh, fantastic. Yep, okay. Well, that was pretty good. I'm impressed by that. Yeah, so um, one thing I'd like to mention is uh, Grace has been uh, pouring these beers using the proper boring, pouring technique. Um, not really. Which is I tried. Well, but. we tried, yeah. <laughs> so what you're supposed to do is pour down the side of the glass on a, on a 45 degree angle, but then move it into the center so that you get those, uh, you get that turbulation, you get that head retention, that, which will, will, will release the gases from the beer. Um, so you don't get so much, like a lot of people um, fall into the trap of pouring a beer with as little head as possible from the, from the bottle. Mm -hmm. That's a tap pouring technique. Bottle pouring, you want to release those gases, otherwise you're not going to feel good inside. Anyway. Handy hint. Handy hint. I didn't hint. know that, because I get that. <laughs> I, I get a little bit bloated. You yeah, yeah. Remember I gave you that advice? Yeah, though. and I'm I just never listened to. Ah. <laughs> That's right. I'll stop mansplaining things to you. Um, so, uh, that's it from us, I think. Um, <laughs> Have I missed anything? I don't think so. I think that's pretty thorough running yeah. over. We've got some, we've got three beers. German lagers. Yep. Good, solid German lagers. Easy drinking. Nothing fancy, but... But what? still, pretty Not delicious. Um, so, thanks for joining us today. Um, as 
you know Glengarry's is doing online deliveries, please do have a look at the website, our offering. We've got not just these three lagers, obviously. We've got plenty of different beers for you guys to try. Um, and we're doing, we will be doing one of these every week for the next five weeks, so tune in. Um, next week will be ales. Um, and I'll explain to you what ales are as opposed to lagers, which we've covered today. And yeah, so we'll see you next Thursday. Excellent. Thanks, guys.